Today I'll be doing a picture kucha on Reader's Theater and the mother of creative drama, Leo West Bolin. Now, what is picture kucha? So, question. Picture kucha is a 6 minute 40 second presentation, 20 pictures, 20 second days. That being said, today's picture kucha is brought to you today by me, Jisoo Jung, through for sure. Picture kucha, as I have stated before, will be covered on Reader's Theater and VLS Poland. First, let's take a look at Reader's Theater. When Reader's Theater first was created, there were a few concepts that was formed with it. The concept of Reader's Theater was formed as a simple and efficient way to present literature in an engaging and dramatic way. In creative drama, Reader's Theater can be used in various curricular areas. Some of those curricular areas covered language arts, social studies, mathematics, and science. The quote-unquote script or text used is broken into parts for each student and they have the opportunity to act it out for the class. Reader's Theater is a way of getting the students involved without simply having them read aloud one at a time. Reader's Theater is also used for the children to get involved in sharing literature, reading aloud, writing or coming up with a script together, performing with a purpose, and collaboratively working together. Reader's Theater does not require any memorization of lines, blocking, costume, or special lighting. The only things that are truly needed are the script and participation after the parts have been divided up, as well as gestures and expressing through voice. Because how similar play and playing can for the kids, children's imaginations can be used to advantage to create characters, scenes, and stories, and use all the ideas to infuse it into one when starting to write a script as a group. When having to work in groups, there may be problems that arises, and it's when the problems arise that it will give the kids a chance to be able to work together to find a solution to dissolve a problem that has risen. Drama in form of reader's theater also can help encourage children in emotional growth, motivation, and engagement. The reading that is required can help boost listening and speaking skills, increase confidence, and have those that are reluctant about reading become book lovers. It's suggested that everyone gets involved, whether it be through greeting their classmates or parts being assigned. Rick Swallow also suggests that music stands are used so that kids can have their hands be free to turn pages and make hand gestures when reading aloud together as a group. Reader's theater is one way for the kids to be able to develop interpersonal, social, and collaborative skills. This also helps the kids be able to be expressive through reading and acting when they're not able to express themselves in any other ways. Working together and engaging the students aren't the only things that the Reader's Theater helps out with. It also helps increase motivation for reading and comprehension, provides a purpose for reading, and also gives opportunities for cooperative learning. When picking a script for Reader's Theater, the script needs to be chosen carefully. The script has to be interesting, have good storyline, interesting characters, conflict, plot action, humor, and good amount of dialogue instead of long descriptive passages as well as steady pace. When the creative drama leader decides to do a story dramatization and narrative pantomiming, the criteria mentioned for readers' theater should be the similar criteria that needs to be taken into consideration and into thought. 
In order to best aid the students, the teachers can emphasize the following. 1. Preparation. When preparing, the students can highlight the spoken lines, underline the words that he or she wants to act out, but first read through the part silently. The second thing that can be used to best aid the students is to rehearse. When rehearsing, one must look up while reading to get more comfortable with the script. Every rule is important, so it's best to slow down when speaking and to speak with feelings. Chris Gustafson had written a book called Acting Out, Reader's Theater Across the Curriculum, and this book has various scripts that covers from language arts, social studies, science, math, all the way to information literacy. Acting Out is a collection of short scripts that are adaptations by other people in order to make the time at the library more interesting for the kids. This book also includes self-evaluation sheets for the kids to determine how well they did during rehearsal time. Something Funny Happened at the Library is another book that can be used to help people of all ages to work together, mainly elementary and middle school kids. This will also give the students a chance to work with various age groups instead of just their own. And finally, one of the things that people don't realize is that for Reader's Theater, even music and raps can be used. Few of the examples are found in Something Funny Happened at the Library f to close up an activity for the day. Now, how can Reader's Theater help children's education even for infants and toddlers? Good question. When infants and toddlers first learn how to read, they may be helped more when reading the same story over and over again, meaning repetition, repetition, repetition. Now, let's look into Viola Spolin, who is the mother of creative drama. What's interesting about this woman is that she has created various types of theater games. And it's also from creative drama that Viola Theater has formed. Before Viola Spolin had gotten into making theater games, she first had resided in Chicago. When she said that she was going to go to New York, it was in hopes of becoming an actress. But when her dream had failed her, she had moved back home to Chicago. Boland was inspired by Neva Boyd's teaching in group leadership, recreation, and social group work in his group work school in Chicago. And Joe Beth Gonzalez was inspired by Spolin's work and had done games and warm up exercises that Spolin had come up with, such as Yes and Game and Portrait. Jeffrey Sweet has worked on something wonderful right away, which is an oral report on Second City and the Compass Players. The founding director of the Second City and the Compass Players is Paul Sills, who is the son of Spolin. Few of the many famous people that are the alumni of the Second City Company include Mike Nichols, Elaine May, Jim Belushi, and Gilda Redner. As I've stated before when brought up, Paul Sills is the son of Viola Spolin. Not just in biology. Growing up, Paul Sills was taught to play some of the improvisational games that his mother had created when he went into theater, such as gibberish relay, gibberish English, gibberish interpreter, dubbing, and who am I? 
Intuition is something that Spolin believed everyone has, and is where true improvisation appears spontaneously. Her idea came to be in a way that there would be a deep non-intellectual connection between mind and body working harmoniously in a play. Mirror is one game that can always get the actors into a state of mind where they can shadow one another's moves, but will also keep the audience guessing on who's following who. All the theater games that Spolin had made was by her responding to developing new games that focused on individuals, such as creativity, adapting and focusing on concept of play to unlock one's capacity to creative self-expression. With the self-expression involved, this ties back into the intuition that was mentioned before, which is one of the few points that Spolin had in mind for her theater games. Other points include physicalization, spontaneity, intuition, audience, and transformation. One of the great examples for all these five points being in a show is Tony and Tina's wedding. Both the actors and audience members are involved in the game and provides a space to play in order to heighten the sensitivity as well as increase self-awareness. Now, going back to the games, Spolin had come up with most of the games that are commonly used in theater trainings, such as theater camps, so that those who are interested in having to go into acting will be able to learn a few techniques and games that may help them loosen up before a show. Professional theater also uses these games to prepare themselves for performances. These games are also used in order to get the actors to be prepared to get ready to improvise in case of something going wrong in the show. Spolin's games can also be seen being used in elementary and secondary educations, schools for gifted and talented programs, curriculum studies in English, religion, mental health, psychology, and in centers for rehab for delinquent children. Skit Guys is one religious group that does a lot of improvisation, not just for entertainment of their audience members, but also to get certain points across that they want to have the audience get in their story. Role playing can also be used in therapy sessions to get the patients, both the adult and child alike, on how the patient perceives other people, such as their family members, by portraying their behaviors. Just like improvisation for the theater, the book that is commonly used for solo actors is titled Theater Games for the Lone Actor. This book contains games to play as a side coaching type of handbook for solo actors. For those that are interested in looking to more books than the two mentioned, there are also books titled Viola Spolin Conducts Theater Games, Viola Spolin Theater Games for the Classroom, and Theater Games for Rehearsal, A Director's Handbook.